Hello, this is Sparrowbinder doing a follow-up video on the mount for a telescope to video camera, especially one that's like a iPhone type video camera. This is actually a what they call a blog camera because you can turn it up like that, turn it towards yourself and actually do a blog of yourself. And so you can see yourself, make sure you're lined up in the picture and everything. That's why I call it as a blog type one. I took this out and I tried it out. And it works pretty good. This part here goes around the eyepiece. This little metal part here. And then you just do your adjustments at the scope with the camera to move it in or out, however you need it, how close you want to get. I got some raw footage which I'm going to show right now and oop, move that out of the picture and this is the raw footage I took through the telescope tonight on the uh, August 24th 2012 and it was about 7.40 or so in the evening and like I said this is raw footage I didn't do anything to crop it or anything. This is just how it looked to the eyepiece. And you can actually do cropping and stuff and get the rounding out of it of the uh, looking in the eyepiece. You get too close. I have a Schmidt and Cassegram and if you get too close to it in the Schmidt Cassegram uh, you pick up the secondary mirror. And I think it would do the same thing in a regular reflector. The only one that wouldn't do that would be a refractor, which is your average telescope you can find at Kmart and stuff, you know, a one and a half inch lens and it's about three foot long. Uh, this is some of the video I got off of the telescope of the moon. It's a half moon or first quarter. And it's not doing too bad. I used the uh, when I used the zoom on it, the zoom in, I didn't have to worry about the circling because I just zoomed into the eyepiece and that's why I'm picking up all these craters and stuff close up. I still got some uh, minor things I need to do. I think I need like uh, lock washers so it would lock the, the nuts a little better on it because apparently you're not locking all that great and so you may see it go to white flash because the camera turned away from the eyepiece at an angle and let's see yeah see that that was the camera moving it was loose on the part where the camera was uh, mounted to that's hooked to the all thread and I need to put lock washers there on the all thread part where the uh, mounting bracket for the camera is to keep it from swinging real easy like that. Here it's kind of loose. I couldn't get it to really tighten up very good, but finger tight. And I guess I could have used a pair, of, two pair of pliers or wrenches, and tweaked it tight. But it didn't do too bad of a job. I'm kind of satisfied. It's a, this Vivitar that I'm using is a uh, what they call the high definition. So it's kind of great. It's only high definition when you don't have to zoom in. Because as you can see, you can almost see a little bit of pixelation. Because it doesn't really zoom in optically. It zooms in onto the CCD. And so it, all it does is zoom in on the pixels. <laughs> and I found that's an irritant. I guess you have to pay more than forty-five hours for a video camera to uh, get something a little better. I mean, I've seen cameras three, four hundred dollars, five hundred, eight hundred. It probably have uh, actual optical zoom on them. But it's like over here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like you can see little blocks, which is the little block on the CCD where it magnified it. So I have another camera it has a optical zoom up to 40x 
and after that it has to have uh, it does the uh, CCD magnification non-optical and this is some of the ridges and stuff it's on the moon that I captured Not noticing now is why my slide bar is not moving on the bottom. Hmm, interesting. This is about 24 minutes. I'm not going to run it that far. Let me see. Oh, okay. There it is. It's back again. It's not moving, I don't think, still. But I can move it now further into the video. using a screen capture you know, it, every time you touch the camera it, it, or the telescope even, it vibrates the scope itself so that scope vibration what there is, there's a trick in, in astrophotography where if you're using just a still camera that uses film or has time exposure they, they call it the hat trick you stick a hat over the or like a piece of uh, black construction paper over the the front of the telescope you click you click your uh, camera on and until it locks open open shutter and then you wait a couple of seconds and then you pull like about five seconds and you pull that piece of uh, construction paper out of the way and you get a picture like this perfect picture you know, no vibration or anything like right, I said this is raw footage and it's the first time I tested this out and I was just trying to see what I needed to do to improve it and it looks like it's going to be pretty good it looked good even on the uh, camera screen and it's showing lots and lots of detail it may have been kind of better if I have used uh, maybe a moon filter on the eyepiece which is a polarized filter to uh, darken it up a little bit so it wasn't so bright and hazy looking and it would have been a little bit more refined craters it's not too bad right now I mean this is still daylight as you can see you can still see blue sky around it Oop, my camera shifting again that's the camera shift and it's not pointing directly into the eyepiece there it is I moved it back and start to go back and forth to figure out where it was centered and I just wanted to give you a short example of what you can do with uh, homemade devices and cheap camera the telescope wasn't cheap though I think I paid thirteen hundred dollars for it about ten twenty years ago it's a Schmidt Cassegrain by uh, Celestron with star bright coatings and all that good stuff on it. I thought if I was going to get a scope, I was going to get a uh, Schmidt Cassegrain because they're small, they're more portable than a bigger scope. It's like a bigger aperture with a shorter scope focal length. There I am zooming back in using the camera zoom. And see, until I stop turning the knobs and adjusting tweaking the knobs and it shakes a little bit and you see a lot of heat's coming off of it that's atmospheric heat going over the moon that's why it looks like it's waving around um, I said if I had the uh, drive unit turned on it wouldn't have been moving at all but like I said it was the moon and, and I just wanted to check this this uh, camera mount out and, and show you a little bit that you can do this. You have a, basically have any any telescope will work, a field scope will even work. You just have to have the mounting equipment, a thing that can go around the eyepiece, and, and that's what holds the camera in front of the eyepiece. Put the mount slide onto it. I'm seeing just a hair bit of color in this. This is kind of neat because the moon is in color. It's not just gray and black and white. It actually has color, little blues and greens and other colors to it. OK. 
Okay. I think that's enough for this. I think I'm going to let it go here. Hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. And maybe you're going to try it too and put your results up. Feel free to leave comments and other astronomers. Uh, it's out there on YouTube. I've seen some other people's works. Walton. Well, Walton did excellent work. And I am back to where I may have been able to move the camera just a hair bit further in, but I was afraid that I was going to catch the secondary mirror. It turns into just a big black spot in the middle. <laughs> camera's not straight into the eyepiece. There it is. There we go. Alrighty then. Let me shrink this back down. See where I'm at. Oh, I'm at 11 minutes. I really wasn't going to go that long on this. But I'll show you everything again real quick. This is the uh, mount. That's what you use. I get up here. Make sure I got so you got to do some, you got to adjust this part here, adjust the camera in, because this is just a, a slide, just a bar here, and it just swivels back and forth, and you just got to make sure you get it lined up so it's in the center of that pipe clamp, and this is a uh, two inch, on uh, number two, I think that would be a two inch, it's a number two pipe clamp for EMT and it uh, fits on a 25 millimeter eyepiece. That's perfect for a 25. I need a little bit longer bolt on the bottom one here for the 30 millimeter eyepiece. It was a little short. I was going to use a 30 millimeter and then I said, well, I don't have to turn this around and swap these out and put this on top the two inch for the 25 millimeter and uh, that's basically it this is it and like I said this is like a uh, less than $50 camera get them at uh, big lots or odd lots if you have one in your area they should be carrying these type of cameras that's read the blog camera as I call it like I said it's got a flip screen on it all right, you turn that there, and you can all right, back on. See what happened. Ah, got too much light coming in from somewhere. Uh, I guess from the light behind the com computer screen. That's a basically a blog camera, and then you flip it back down, and then you can turn it back around, and yeah, it's getting a glare off of the light. Alrighty. And it says goodbye and that's it. Alright, I'm gonna leave it there. You know, have a nice evening. Enjoy this evening. Hope it's if you're an astronomer and you've been out resetting up for tonight. It's clear in the uh, Ohio Valley area as of right now. Don't know how long that's gonna last. And uh until next time, keep your eye on the sky. <laughs>